Hello, my name is Jeannie Carlisle. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and continuing care manager for palliative care here in the Central Valley area. Today you are going to meet members of the palliative care team and hear what they have to share about this program and their roles and experience in it. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Paul Leung. I am a palliative care physician here at Kaiser Permanente uh, Central Valley. I have been here more than three years and have been working with a highly skilled interdisciplinary team in uh, Modesto Medical Center. I am board certified in internal medicine, geriatrics, and hospice and palliative medicines. Many patients have asked me, what is palliative care? In my opinion, palliative care is an important aspect of medicine. It is a way for healthcare provider to establish the human connection with patients and their families during the difficult time that they need us the most. Uh, palliative care is different from hospice and end of life. It can be concurrently provided to patients who receive active treatment. Ideally, it should be initiated at the time a diagnosis of life-limiting condition is made. The goal of palliative care are to understand patient value and wishes, to guide them to make complex medical decisions consistent with their wishes, and to help them to live as comfortable and as well as possible. Palliative care is a team approach which consists a physician, a social worker, a nurse, and a chaplain. They work together at the team to provide a a comprehensive care to patient and family, care that not only limited to to medical issue, but also psychological, social, and spiritual need of the patient. At the palliative care physician, I help our Kaiser members and family to understand the disease trajectory, prognosis, treatment options, and the pro and con of each option. In addition, I help manage patient pain and symptom which can be very challenging to be controlled for many patients with life limiting condition. By controlling their pain and symptom, I can help improve their quality of life and comfort. According to Dr. Diane Myers, a director of the Center to Advance Palliative Care, having a conversation with patient and family about very complex medical decision in the context of serious illness is the procedure. It requires training, practice, and supervision just like any other complex medical procedure. We hope that in the next five to ten years, we will see a transformation of medical education, nursing education, and other healthcare professional education so that no one will graduate from school without being able to conduct a meaningful conversation with patients and their family about what matters the most to them, what gives their life meanings, and how can we at, at the healthcare professional provide them to help them to achieve what gives their life meanings. I love this work and it is such an honor for me to help people at a difficult time like this. And thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Sandy McGrath. I'm the palliative care nurse here at Kaiser in Modesto. I'm also certified in hospice and palliative care nursing. There are official definitions of palliative care, but for me, palliative care means providing patients and their families with truthful information regarding their chronic disease and its trajectory so that they can make decisions based on their values and goals and not ours. After all, it is their life and their right to make decisions on how they want to live that life. People have different ideas and levels of acceptance about quality of life also, and palliative care is values neutral. 
In palliative care discussions, we ask patients and families what they know about their condition. Oftentimes, they have very little understanding, even though they have had the disease for years. The focus has been on treatment, and they often miss the chronic, not curable piece of the disease. Although palliative care is ideally initiated early in the outpatient setting, in the inpatient we often deal with end-of-life care. We also do life care planning and education with any chronic disease patient. Palliative care can begin at any time along with life care planning. Staff are often confused with palliative and end of life or hospice and comfort care. End of life care or hospice care is appropriate when a patient is at the stage that a physician determines it would not be surprising if the patient died in six months. If the disease takes its natural course, and of course if the patient chooses for no further treatment and they do not want to return to the hospital. Hospice is a specialty care that provides treatment for pain and symptom management. Hospice can be provided in a patient's home if she or he has a 24-hour caregiver, in a boarding care, or in a long-term care facility that has a hospice waiver. Hospice is covered by Medicare, Medi-Cal, and private insurance. Hospice RNs will make visits to the patient's home. They will be available by phone 24 hours a day, and they will also provide home health aides, MSWs, chaplains, and even volunteers when available. Hospice will provide DME such as a hospital bed, bedside commode, oxygen, and all medications related to their symptom and pain management. And this is all at no cost to the patient. In term of comfort care, or the term of comfort care in the hospital is used when a patient is imminently dying, when it's unsafe to transfer them to another level of care. There is a comfort order set that's initiated with the goal of keeping the patient, of course, comfortable and preventing further suffering during the dying process. In order to help healthcare workers to identify patients eligible for palliative care services, we have developed palliative care triggers. If you have a patient who meets any of these triggers, please request a palliative care referral from the HBS. An HBS physician can submit a palliative care referral to our palliative care team, to our inbox, and then from there the palliative care team will contact the patient and family and set up a palliative care meeting. As a frontline healthcare worker, we appreciate your initiative and appropriate identification of palliative care patients. Thank you for your assistance. Hello, my name is Sue Dixon. I'm a palliative care nurse for Kaiser Permanente in the Central Valley. Palliative care specializes in the relief of pain, symptoms, and the stress of a serious illness. The goal of palliative care is to prevent and relieve suffering and to ensure the best possible quality of life for patients and their families. Palliative care is appropriate at any stage of an illness and can be provided at the same time as curative treatment. Life care planning and palliative care are very important. Kaiser Permanente is very focused on understanding what patients wish and what their individual values are, particularly when the patient is living with a serious chronic progressive illness like congestive heart failure, COPD, and stage renal failure, and on hemodialysis or cancer. Life care planning is a discussion with the patient and the family that communicates to the health care team what the member hopes for, who will make decisions for the member if the member is not able to make their own decision, what the goals of care are, what the code status is, what's the desired location for care, and whether to start, continue, or stop medical treatment. An advanced health care directive is a legal document that is used which reflects the above discussion and allows a patient to appoint someone to make health care decisions for them if they're not able to make them for themselves. A physician order for life-sustaining treatment, that hot pink form, is something that we use with medically frail patients with a chronic disease when no one would be surprised if the patient were to die within a year. 
we discuss their code status, and this becomes a legal document in the state of California signed by both the patient and the physician. Unless the patient's wishes are known, by default, the healthcare team must engage in full resuscitation unless otherwise indicated. The original pink copy always accompanies the patient. We do a palliative care assessment with every consult that we have, and we take into account the patient's current condition in the hospital, as well as what the patient was like before admission. We use a palliative performance scale to address the patient's ability to ambulate and use durable, durable medical equipment, their level of activity and evidence of disease, how effective their self-care is, their intake related to nutrition, and their level of consciousness. We also perform a medical, psychosocial, emotional, and spiritual assessment as well. I really like to try to talk to the primary care nurse to get as much information as I can with the patient. And last of all, communication, of course, is always huge. With palliative care, we like to think this happens across the entire continuum of care. The palliative care physician speaks with the HBS or specialists. The palliative care RN speaks with the patient care coordinator, the primary care nurses, social workers, respiratory therapists, physical therapists, to gather as much information as possible so we can provide the highest level of palliative care to our patients and families in the CVA. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chaplain Quincy McLean and I am the Spiritual Care Manager for Kaiser Permanente in the Central Valley and a member of the palliative care team. Some of the things that I'd like to talk with you today about are the signs of spiritual distress, uh, signs that are uh, triggers when it's appropriate to make a um, referral to the palliative care team, whether it's for the whole team or just chaplaincy support. We at Kaiser Permanente, our chaplains are interfaith chaplains and we see people of all faiths or people with no particular faith background. Our goal is to help and support the overall health and well-being of our members. I'd like to cover these 12 spiritual distress signals and they are not all the signals that you may see, but they are some of the top 12 that I've identified in my practice over the years that I've been with um, Kaiser Permanente and chaplaincy. Patients may experience a wide spectrum of spiritual distress signals such as suffering physical and emotional pain when the burden of the illness is just so overwhelming. They may begin to question their faith, their beliefs. They may ask, why me, God, type questions. They may, may be angry at God or their higher power or questioning their whole faith systems. They may be angry just at the world or just hearing bad news is a wonderful time to engage spiritual services to support a person during that time. You may see your patients crying or weeping uncontrollably, or they may begin to withdraw from themselves and just wanna be in isolation from their loved ones and everyone else. Patients that are withdrawing from treatment um, may prefer to have, whether it's chaplain or their own pastoral support, to be there and present at that time. People and uh, patients often question their meaning of life, their purpose of life uh, during times of crisis. We also see that grief and loss, whether it's the loss of their own health or experiencing feelings of a recent loss, a death of a loved one, may be also a time to contact chaplain services. The loss of feelings of despair, sadness, and just having a general flat effect as well. And decisions made to withdraw aggressive treatment and 
comfort care treatment um, measures are implemented and death is imminent is also a time to contact us. We thank you for um, this time and if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me and we thank you very much. As you can see, we have a team with the qualifications and experience necessary for an excellent palliative care program. We welcome your interest, questions, and we appreciate your referrals. Thank you so much.